Alaska's perilous seas have long been a frightening frontier for those daring enough to venture out. The risk is constant for captains traveling these cold seas. Occasionally, even the most seasoned sailors fall victim to the ocean's relentless hold. Tragic events have happened again recently, with another skipper losing their life in Alaskan seas. What caused this terrible moment to occur? We go deeply into the dangerous life of a deadliest catch captain today learning about the occasions leading up to his last voyage and the lasting impact he leaves behind. Jared Sechrist had some run-ins with the law. Jared Sechrist was a popular short-term cast member of Deadliest Catch who immediately made waves. Not everyone can catch crab as the reality show follows teams as they look for them in dangerous waters. To protect the females and avoid overfishing, Fishermen must be able to distinguish between male and female crabs. Seacrest claimed to be an expert angler, yet he could not differentiate between the two. And that was only the start. Eventually, the law would get to him in life. The former cast member of Deadliest Catch was reportedly arrested for careless driving and found to have illegal drugs on him. He was jailed for 43 days. Serious accusations were made against Sig Hansen by his daughter. Since his premiere, Fisherman Sig Hansen has become a fan favorite of the show. Nevertheless, throughout his divorce and custody battle, his daughter leveled some grave accusations against him. Although a judge dismissed the charges, Hansen's daughter claimed that he had molested her when she was a baby. The fisherman refutes the accusations, blaming his ex-wife's intervention for their relationship's deterioration. Hansen has further stated that he was the target of multiple attempts at financial extortion by his ex-partner the most recent of which, he alleges, occurred in 2016. Hansen described the case as blackmail and nothing more than an old-fashioned shakedown. On the water, fishermen who capture the deadliest catch are not alone. Watching the deadliest catch film gives the impression that these fishermen are alone in the water. Although the reality TV show presents an image of a solitary lifestyle, that isn't how things are. Hundreds of ships are probably circling the exact ocean location instead of just one. This is commercial fishing, after all, and capturing as many crabs as you can is profitable. There's fierce rivalry on the water. Therefore, business won't allow a small number of vessels to steal all the best hauls. The other contestants are absent from the discovery program. Crab is off the menu while working on Deadliest Catch. Given that catching crab is their primary objective, one may assume that the crews of Deadliest Catch live off it all the time. Despite the abundance of shellfish all around them, there's an excellent reason why it's not on the menu – financial gain. These people are primarily out on the water to bring home as much crab as possible. They're only wasting their money by consuming it. Another solid reason, according to seasoned sea hand Sig Hansen, why crab is never served to the fishermen on Deadliest Catch is because it's too messy to eat during choppy boat rides, and crews are frequently so busy that they don't find time to eat anyway. Elliot Neese was caught catching protected crabs. There are stringent regulations that must be followed by all the people to be able to continue crab fishing in Alaskan waters. Although Elliot Neese has been a regular cast member on Deadliest Catch, he's an experienced skipper who committed a novel mistake. The fishing authorities discovered 13 undersized crabs, and the captain was accused of catching them. Only the more significant, older crabs can be grabbed. Smaller crabs are typically younger. Nice was fined an initial $6,000. Captains are responsible for their boats and bear the ultimate responsibility. Nice's fee was lowered to $3,000 after entering a guilty plea, but his reputation suffered as a result of the rule violation going viral. Jake Anderson has experienced multiple life-altering events. Putting your life in danger for a reality show must be difficult. The risk that they won't return at all is severe because things are so tricky. But that's nothing compared to the harsh life that Jake Anderson had to leave. Earlier in his life, the saga captain struggled with addiction, spending two years on the streets. Anderson has also managed to overcome a few catastrophes in his family. Anderson learned about his sister's sudden death during the fifth season of Deadliest Catch. Then, while Anderson was at work, his father went missing and his body was discovered in a vehicle. A year later, the captain found out about his father's passing. 
Joshua Tell Warner's criminal past caught up with him once he appeared on The Deadliest Catch. A seasoned bank robber, one might assume, would stay hidden. Not Joshua Tell Warner. Joshua originally appeared on The Deadliest Catch in 2009, and the allure of being on television proved too much. Because of his sudden notoriety, he was imprisoned not long after. The fisherman was thought to have committed two thefts, one in 2009 and one in 2017. Warner even confided to a crew member that appearing on the show would not resolve his criminal background. Through Deadliest Catch, police were able to identify Warner, and in 2010, they detained him on suspicion of participating in bank robberies. Warner was sentenced to nine and a half years in prison, after which he was taken off the screens. Throughout his stroke, Captain Phil Harris wanted the cameras to continue rolling. Captain Phil Harris had a stroke in season six. The skipper didn't want the cameras to stop, even though he knew how serious it was. He knew that his medical problem was part of the story that filmmakers were trying to tell. Harris knew the story needed to come to a close, so the camera crew kept filming even as he was being evacuated to safety. Captain Harris had emergency brain surgery while in the hospital in Anchorage, Alaska, and seemed to be recovering miraculously quickly. Nevertheless, Harris died from a brain bleed a few days after having his stroke, leaving his family, friends, and deadliest catch viewers distraught by their loss. For months, the camera team may put their lives in danger to produce the show. The fishermen are putting their lives in peril to capture the deadliest catch, and the folks filming the show are also in grave danger. Discovery deploys two-man camera teams to spend up to five weeks on the ships alongside the crew to get every angle. The video crews are forced to live aboard with the fishing crews and are not allowed to leave the boat. For those capturing deadliest catch, the film crews had to endure the hard way, while others on challenging reality shows could take a breather from the action. Over six months, these fishing crews spent much time with the filmmaking teams and their new roommates, 24 hours a day. Deadliest catch fishers don't have to rely on meeting quotas. A catch quota is something that many people who work on fishing boats are aware of. They have a contract to catch a certain number of fish or crabs, and their fees may be reduced if they return less. Most fishing rigs must frequently jump through hoops and are subject to high demanding regulations. This isn't the case for deadliest catch, as the fishermen rely on fishing as a secondary source of income due to their employment on the TV show. They can afford to undercut the pricing of all other fishing vessels and possibly irritate other fishermen because they aren't too concerned about generating money from the fish they capture. Sig Hansen had to save the life of a camera operator once. A beloved Deadliest Catch crew member, Sig Hansen, helped win over more admirers during a Jimmy Kimmel Live appearance by cautioning the audience about the genuine risks, which also apply to the camera teams. Hansen clarified that he was compelled to take action during one maritime adventure. One of the incredibly heavy crab traps was headed straight towards a cameraman. According to Hansen, the pot weighed 900 pounds, and since the operator was unprepared, the captain acted quickly. The crab pot crashed a few seconds after he could move the cameraman out of the way. Elliot Neese was forced to leave Deadliest Catch to battle his addictions. In season 11, Elliot Neese was a ship's captain before quitting and handing the reins to Jeff Folk, his first mate. Viewers were perplexed why Neese abruptly resigned. But in 2015, those doubts might have been resolved. Nice tweeted that he is enrolled in a 60-day treatment center in an attempt to overcome his drug addiction. In 2017, Nice disclosed that he had relapsed during the celebration of his 90-day clean streak. Notwithstanding his difficulties, Decker Watson, executive producer of Deadliest Catch, made every effort to return Nice to the program in 2017. Despite his best efforts, the showrunner could not convince Nice to rejoin the sea captain on Alaskan waters. For ship commanders, the moon may have a significant impact. It's simple to assume that Earth is unaffected by the moon. Ultimately, given its distance, what potential might it have? As a sea captain, you know the moon's influence over the tides well. 
tidal force fluctuates according to the gravitational pull. The more significant the pull, the larger the waves. Because they know they'll struggle to keep their boat afloat, captains watch for the full moon. Jake Anderson likened the experience to torture, while Wild Bill declared he feared the sea during the 2018 supermoon. Nobody was gravely injured, despite their fears on the supermoon night. Changes in the environment are having a significant impact on crew safety. Undoubtedly, alterations in the surroundings impact the events that transpire on the deadliest catch. Although an unexpected, violent storm might potentially ruin the crew, the environment seems to be changing the most. The crabs are looking for new locations to live as the temperature of the waters around Alaska rises. Fishing teams are forced to pursue them into riskier areas, where storms are considerably more violent. By venturing farther into the ocean, fishing boats are likewise putting themselves in danger of being rescued. Although the show tries to stay out of controversy, the executive producer claims that everyone on Deadliest Catch is affected by environmental changes. There have been claims that part of the drama in Deadliest Catch is scripted. Many believe that Deadliest Catch is shot in one take. Although numerous takes are used for various sequences, just as in other TV shows, the more difficult sequences can be resorted until the crew is satisfied, but the very tight stuff must be done in a single take. Naturally, the fact that this reality TV show has so many retakes lessens its authenticity. In addition to the difficulty of their work, the fishermen frequently have to take shots to satisfy the filmmakers. Like other reality shows, there have even been claims and suspicions that part of the drama in the series is staged for more significant impact, casting even more doubt on the integrity of it all. Alaska's economy may have suffered as a result of the deadliest catch. Although the fishermen featured in Deadliest Catch are prospering, this is not the case for other fishermen. The competition is having difficulty making ends meet because the Discovery Channel sponsors fishing expeditions for a limited number of ships. According to Alaska Dispatch News, the local government is not pleased with how deadliest catch harms fishermen. Other ships, unrelated to the show, find it nearly impossible to keep up with the funding involved. This means fishermen are making minimum wage, but crabbing is too risky for them to earn such meager wages. The last northern crabbing fleet is having financial difficulties, and some are saying that Alaska wants to eliminate the deadliest catch. Depending on where deadliest catch is shown worldwide, more than one narrator is used. It's not always the case that people who enjoy deadliest catch will listen to Mike Rowe narrate the program. Yes, he is solely responsible for narrating the American version of the show. Each foreign audience has its voice. Malaysia is listening to Nazar Bilal Khan, while the UK is getting Bill Petrie. The production crew decided it'd be best to vary things up for the narrator, even though the show featured American voices for the cast members. The showrunners believe that by having the stories narrated in a more relatable accent, viewers would be better able to connect with the program. Given the global success of Deadliest Catch, we assume the showrunners were correct. The teams behind Deadliest Catch may not be as busy as they appear. The crews of the fishing vessels appear to have little time for breathing breaks in the Discovery Reality series. They work incredibly hard, no doubt about it, but they aren't always on the go like Deadliest Catch portrays them to be. According to several sources, the teams on these ships allegedly have far more downtime than you might imagine. There seem to be hundreds of intense moments that are left out of the show for everyone who does. The performance is meant to be entertaining, and if all we saw were a group of fishermen playing cards, it'd be rather dull. The fans return during those intense times. Crews spend more time on the water than is seen in the episode. Every time we watch an episode of Deadliest Catch, it seems like the team goes out, gets their haul, and heads back home for the evening. This is untrue because the crew frequently spends weeks or months at sea. They may appear to arrive and depart often, but in reality, they might shoot a whole season in a single trip. The editing team is responsible for crafting the narrative after the camera crews have documented nearly everything that occurs on the water. 
in addition to hard work days, the video crew faces the same weather challenges as the fishermen. Thus, they'll need to get their sea legs before setting sail. Jake Harris may find living on a ship safer than living on land. Jake Harris and his father joined the cast of Deadliest Catch, but Harris is in greater danger when he's not jeopardizing his life in Alaskan seas. Harris allegedly crashed his car and ran away from the scene when he was away from his team. Police were called to Harris's ship later that year because his fellow crew members thought he was abusing drugs. The string of risky events didn't end there. In 2016, Harris suffered brain damage during a robbery incident after breaking his skull. Harris refused to leave his RV in 2019, leading park officers to pursue him. Harris was allegedly found to have a firearm, illegal drugs, and alcohol when state troopers apprehended him. Josh Harris sought retribution for his brother's attack. After being the target of an attempted robbery, Jake Harris suffered a broken skull. The deadliest catch actor was assaulted inside his car in 2016 while he was leaving a casino. He was then battered and abandoned on the road. Even though Jake's brother Josh attempted to assist, Jake refused to go to the hospital despite the severity of his injuries. Josh pushed for Jake's hospital admission despite initially declining medical assistance. Jake was placed immediately into critical care upon arrival, but that wasn't all. Josh decided to take matters into his own hands and started searching for his brother's attackers by uploading images of them online. A week later, Jake's assailants were taken into custody. It's been claimed that Deadliest Catch misleads viewers about the risks associated with crab fishing. The Hollywood Reporter asserts that one specific Deadliest Catch incident wasn't as risky as the show made it appear. 2008 saw a massive storm rage, seemingly threatened to sink one of the ships. Although fishing vessels frequently experience being washed out by storms, that wasn't the case this time. A month after the photos of the ship in the ocean, the show taped a storm video, and the boat and crew were reportedly safe. Executives from Deadliest Catch retaliated, asserting that what viewers saw on the program was true. Even if it seems like they do, they could not happen in the order the show wants us to think. Jason King's legal troubles saw him in further trouble with the authorities. Jason King worked under Captains Josh Harris and Casey McManus in the television show The Deadliest Catch in 2015. His tenure on the show wasn't contentious, but his actions off the show landed him in hot water. King has a history of legal issues, and in 2017, those issues would resurface for him. When police enforcement raided the former reality star's house, they discovered a cache of illegal drugs. King was not only guilty, but he also had a criminal record in his state, making it illegal for him to own a weapon. King was given a maximum 51-month prison sentence because of his past crimes. Many cameras are destroyed or lost during the production of The Deadliest Catch. You may have noticed some incredible shots the team gets on Deadliest Catch. Years of practice, finding ways to consistently capture the ideal moment have led to these shots, which don't happen by mistake. Additionally, there's a lot of waiting for things to happen, which adds up to 30,000 hours of film a season on average. Editors must sift through a substantial amount to select a worthy tale to share. Additionally, camera crews replace over a dozen cameras in a season, and not because they keep losing them, though we're sure that does happen sometimes. Mist, strong winds, and salt water render the cameras unusable. Even the producers have encountered some legal challenges. Even if many of the deadliest catch cast members have had difficulties, not everyone faces problems in front of the cameras. Matthew Schneider, a producer on the show, faced charges in 2010 for both drug use and sales. Alaska Dispatch News broke the story, exposing the producer's lack of intelligence. Not only did Schneider reportedly sell an undercover cop about $300 worth of drugs, but that wasn't all. Some of the drugs were allegedly even used by the deadliest catch producer in front of the policeman. Schneider wasn't the only show staff member involved in the bust. 18 others were reportedly taken into custody for drug trafficking. The show has reeled in the awards. 
Nobody could predict if the deadliest catch would be a hit when Discovery introduced it to the public. While not every reality TV program is a hit, fans were captivated by Deadliest Catch from the first moment it aired. Deadliest Catch has received over 50 Emmy nominations since its 2005 premiere. Not only is it always the bridesmaid, but the Discovery series has won 16 Primetime Emmy Awards, so it's more than that. Despite the reputation of inevitable reality shows being obscene, Deadliest Catch has won five Emmys for outstanding cinematography in reality programming. Additionally, the program has received the Best Unobstructed Reality Program and Best Reality Program. Whether you like them or not, the camera crew is here to stay. You quickly discover whose company you can stand when spending weeks at sea. The fishermen from Deadliest Catch is already stuck aboard their ship, so it's not like they have to deal with the camera team on top of that. There's a lot of opportunity for conflict because the crab season lasts over a month. According to Captain Bill Wachowski, getting to know the camera operators makes sense for him and his crew. He clarified that they spend more time on the boat during crab season than with their families. According to Bill, relationships on board are either based on compatibility or dislike. After the show, Blake Painter's troubles didn't end. The final cut of some reality TV stars presents an issue due to how they were edited. As a result, they might appear to be a whole different person. Blake Painter was one such reality star who took issue with his portrayal on reality shows. Before leaving the show, the fisherman participated in Deadliest Catch in seasons two and three. He abandoned it because he disliked how the showrunners portrayed him, but disaster would strike 10 years later. After friends were concerned about the former Deadliest Catch star and heard nothing from him, Painter's body was found. Despite claims that prescription medication was discovered next to Painter's body, it's said that his death was not investigated further. There will always be a villain on Deadliest Catch. Even if everyone is searching for crabs in the open water, Discovery appears to be trying to impose a morality tale. Because of this, Deadliest Catch will frequently feature a villain for the audience to cheer for. After all, since evil people exist in real life, why shouldn't reality TV also feature them? The producers helped direct the show's plot by selecting the most deserving actors to play antagonists. Occasionally, the majority of the job is done by the cast, saving Discovery from having to. For instance, Elliot Neese emerged as the number one public antagonist after Captain Keith Colburn was viewed as one of the show's original villains. The Hillstrands make a hasty exit after a $3 million lawsuit from the Discovery Channel. For many reality stars, getting their spin-off series is the measure of success. The Hillstrand brothers, the breakthrough stars of Deadliest Catch, were invited to star in a television series called Hillstranded in 2010. While everything appeared to be going well for the highly liked fishing siblings, issues with the editing surfaced. Jonathan and Andy were requested to return to Discovery Studio and record voiceovers to assist with the network wrap-up. But the brothers had vanished, prompting a $3 million lawsuit. The Hillstrands, being offended, responded in kind by leaving the show and bringing Captain Sig Hansen with them. The Hillstrand brothers' troubles persisted during a party. Even after Jonathan and Andy Hillstrand's difficulties with Discovery were resolved, they faced legal challenges. The brothers found themselves in difficulty after an incident in 2013 that injured one of their crew members while serving as captains. The Hillstrand brothers reportedly released fireworks from their ship following a Seattle Seahawks victory. The boys' homemade fireworks just made the situation worse. They instructed David Beaver Zielinski, a former crew member, to set off the fireworks, but it blew up in his palm. The fisherman's hand and arm bones broke, and he filed a lawsuit in 2015. After the hearing, Zielinski was given $1.35 million. During the deadliest catch, Elliot Neese's complex background finally caught up with him. Elliot Neese, the hero of deadliest catch, has occasionally struggled with drugs, but that's not the only thing. He was also charged with assaulting his children's mother in 2006, and in 2010 there were claims that Neese had destroyed some of her possessions. The mother of Neese's kids filed for a restraining order in 2012. 
According to court filings, Elliot's ex-partner stated that she started to worry that Nice would lose his temper and turn violent, adding that she feared for her safety. Even if everyone deserves a second chance, Nice's ex-partner seems to find the evil character surrounding him in Deadliest Catch an uncomfortable reminder of the past. The Deadliest Catch producer lost their life in a seemingly unexplained way. The name Deadliest Catch for the Discovery reality series comes from the risks that the fishermen take in their quest to catch fish. Several cast members, including the adored Captain Phil Harris, have passed away during the series. After a storm, numerous other crew members perished and multiple other boats sank. One of the more shocking deaths was the shooting death of producer Joseph McMahon in front of his house. In what seemed to be a random incident, McMahon was shot while investigating a noise. The fact that the guy who shot him had killed himself before help could reach him added to the bizarre situation. Nick McGlashan, who had been on the show, lost his fight with addiction. Nick McGlashan was featured in 78 television series episodes as a Summer Bay ship crew member. Both his family and his followers were shocked to learn of his passing. Growing up on the Alaskan land of Akutan, McGlashan was a seventh-generation fisherman who started crabbing on the Bering Strait at 13. Despite his skill as a fisherman, he didn't appear to let that stop him from doing drugs. At the time, he was 33 years old, and his body was found in a Nashville hotel room. It was discovered after a protracted investigation that the star had tragically overdosed to death. Both Captain Bill and Nick's sister Lydia sent their sincere condolences. Getting on the water can be more straightforward than the show implies. Many people mistakenly believe everyone who risks their life to grab crab on deadliest catch is an expert, but that's not always true. Anyone may obtain a fishing license, even those who don't know what they're doing. Alaskan fishing is said to be significantly more straightforward, requiring only $200 for a commercial fishing license instead of any prior fishing experience. Even though it's not a little sum of money, you would think the man standing next to you would know what he's doing if it meant saving your life. Though that might make for entertaining television, we wouldn't advise anyone to go into the ocean without any prior experience. Sig Hansen nearly suffered two heart attacks. Although one might assume that Sig Hansen's single heart attack would be plenty, the renowned skipper suffered from two heart attacks. In 2016, he launched his first assault. Hansen was riding his luck during this medical emergency, which was fortunate because he required some good fortune to have survived on the choppy waters for so long. Fortunately, Hansen survived the battle another day. Regretfully, in 2018, the skipper suffered yet another heart attack as a result of a serious antibiotic allergy. Hansen arrived at the hospital just in time after being hurried there. Experts doubt he would have survived 10 minutes later. Hansen was kept alive in the hospital with the aid of an EpiPen, and he made a full recovery. Valetti, Freddy Magutai, is pretty quick with his fists. Valetti, Freddy Magutai, appears to have wanted to compete in cage fighting. In 2011, it was reported that the fisherman got into a brawl with a husband and a woman. Magutai said he was defending himself, according to TMZ. In addition to forcing the man's wife aside, Magutai placed the husband in a headlock. The police detained Magutai despite the story. A separate event would later result in the fisherman's dismissal from his ship. We believe that Magutai could have started a fighting career and improved his boxing technique in a gym if he had more spare time. He may challenge the deep sea monsters to see which is superior, the Kraken, the shark or the man. Elliot Neese is far from a fan favorite on Deadliest Catch. Elliot Neese doesn't seem to share most reality TV stars' appreciation for their fan base. Despite his denials to the contrary, the Deadliest Catch actor has frequently found himself as the antagonist. Neese's contacts with show fans on social media aren't helping his reputation positively. According to reports, the captain of the Deadliest Catch frequently harasses supporters, even those who support him. Nice wants it acknowledged that the show's representation of him is inaccurate, but many people aren't open to listening to him. 
there was an internet campaign to have Nice taken off the reality show in 2015. Sig Hansen and an Uber driver once got in a fight. While it may not be as severe as his daughter's accusations, Sig Hansen would want to forget his incident with an Uber driver. Hansen and his family celebrated Norwegian Independence Day with a night of revelry. Hansen then scheduled an Uber to drive them home. But Hansen became hostile when he realized he couldn't pay with cash. The fisherman is said to have spat on the driver's back during the chaos that followed the app's unintentional cancellation of Hansen's ride. Hansen was then accused of kicking the driver's door as well. After a run-in with the law, he was taken into custody. After which, everything became evident. The fisherman apologized. He even expressed a willingness to see the driver in person. Working in the commercial crab game can pay big. The rewards for individuals who brave treacherous waters in search of the deadliest catch are substantial, as one might anticipate for such a risky profession. Perhaps surprisingly, they earn significant money for each successful expedition. Many of the deadliest catch stars have bank accounts to support their seeming lack of a lavish lifestyle. In addition to being a fisherman and a naval engineer, Bill Wild Wachrowski has been a crab fisherman since the late 1970s. Wachrowski, who made his fortune in reality TV and commercial crab fishing, is currently the skipper of the FV Summer Bay and is thought to be worth approximately $3 million. Deadliest Catch isn't Maria's first time on television. Despite being in her 20s, Maria has experienced being in front of the camera. She has everything she needs to be a movie star because of her job as a deckhand. In 2019, Maria made her on-screen debut in the documentary series King Crabbing, which followed a crew that fished for crabs in the Bering Sea. The relationship? Maria was working on none other than the Cornelia Marie at the time. You may see Maria working if you look hard in the background. Despite not having a significant role, Deadliest Catch has made her an important figure. Maria Dosal has eight years of experience as a deckhand. Maria Dosal is one of the newest Deadliest Catch cast members, having committed for season 16. If Maria's social media accounts are to be believed, she appears to enjoy traveling and considers herself an adventurer. The deckhand has been very active on ships for the past five years. Maria reportedly began working at sea for the first time in June 2015 and has since collaborated with a few other teams. Maria has a wealth of knowledge and will be a valuable team member because of her time spent on the FV Pacific Quest and the FV Nicholas Mikael. That is when she's not out seeing the rest of the world. Everyone was thrilled to have Maria join the group. Maria signed her contract with the ship thanks to Captain Josh Harris, who hired the crew to serve on the Cornelia throughout the seasons. Maria was a great fit because she's an avid fisherman and is from Alaska. Everyone appears eager to see what she can do for the squad now. Josh was drawn to Maria for a variety of reasons. In the trailer, he clarified that Maria's expertise was one of the main selling factors. Josh also appreciates her willingness to work hard and her desire for an additional pair of hands to speed up the manufacturing line. Josh believes that Maria could impart her values to everyone. Another fisherman was Maria Dosel's boyfriend. Like many celebrities, Maria prefers to keep her personal affairs hidden. But we now know a little bit more about her romantic history. The deckhand dated Rye McDonald, a fellow fisherman, for at least 18 months. On her social media, she frequently posted pictures of them, but it didn't last. Fortunately, Maria finds love again when she sees Mark Schwantes. The couple called it quits when Maria joined Deadliest Catch. Although Mark is not a fisherman, he likes the outdoors just as much as Maria. In 2021, the couple have their first baby, Hazel May. If you've watched the video till here, that means you've enjoyed the video. Subscribe! Don't forget to turn on the notifications bell icon 